Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here to bring you a review of the NVIDIA GT 1030. Is this graphics card worth it? Well, let's talk about that. The GT 1030 was actually very quietly released by NVIDIA a few weeks ago at a price tag of $70 US. The GT lineup of GPUs from NVIDIA has been known as the, well, sort of display adapters lineup for most consumers. Basically, cards that just aren't designed for gaming. But there is some hype around this GT 1030 with some of the performance numbers that have been released about it, and it may be an interesting value for budget gamers. The model that I have right here, an MSI variant, comes with 2GB of GDDR5 memory with a core clock of 1265MHz and a boost of 1518MHz. Along with all that, it comes comes in a really nice low profile form factor, making it a good option for many ITX based systems or pre-built system upgrades. The card itself requires no external power, being rated at only to draw 30 watts. All of these factors really make it an attractive thing for us personally because we love small form factor PCs and custom builds. It allows us to do stuff in little spaces that don't require a massive power supply. To be able to use something like this, it's very handy. Now that we have gone over the specifics, let's just get right into the benchmark, shall we? Today I plan to run benchmarks inside my i7-5820K test bench with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and try to limit as many bottlenecks as I possibly can for this GT1030. I will soon definitely test this graphics card in a couple more budget oriented setups featuring the Pentium G4560 and even an old school Core 2 quad system in the future so if you aren't already subscribe so you can see that if you're interested. But without any further ado, let's just get into those benchmarks shall we? Alright guys, so now that you've seen the benchmarks, let's recap about what I think about this GPU. This card can be a good option for those who want to play most esports titles at medium to high settings at 1080p, but what makes it hard to recommend it is, well, its price. I paid $70 for this MSI model and I feel like I overpaid by a good $20. This card belongs in the price point of a roughly $50, maybe $60, I might lean towards $60, but at that price it would be a great buy. And it is very possible that over time you could find this kind of card on different retailers at prices with mail and rebates, roughly around $50 or $60, bucks. but at the current price tag? I really cannot recommend people buying it. The main reason behind this is the science of price to performance. If you spend anywhere between $100 to $200 on a graphics card, you're in the theoretical sweet spot of price performance. In terms of newer hardware that is, used hardware is a whole nother story. But when you get below $100, you start getting less performance for your money, just as if you start spending over $250, $300, you stop seeing that big of a difference in that big of a performance jump based on how much money you spend. 
end. So if you are building a new PC, I would avoid this GPU altogether and pick up an RX 470 or 570 instead, which I consider the true price performance king when it comes to 1080p gaming. I definitely think you should save up for that and you will thank me later. But regardless of all that, the GT 1030 is still an interesting card that just seems to be a little bit priced too high, but it does bring another option to the budget hardware space which is always a good thing. That about wraps things up here guys, if you haven't already leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you're interested in following us on Twitter and joining our Discord community, links will be located in the description down below. If you wish to pick up this card as well, there will be links to different retailers down below that actually offer it. And I hope to see you on the next one guys. Peace out.